Hey guys, this is Nirmal back again with a new video and today we'll be looking into a very special plant from the collection that I have been meaning to show you guys for a long time. So be patient and see the video completely to know what the plant is and how it is so special. So guys, it's time to show you guys what I'm talking about. This cute little fellow in my hand, which is not so great looking or so peculiar looking, is the subject of our video. It's called as a Catopsis Bartoroniana. It belongs to or it's kind of like a cousin of bromeliads that we are familiar with. But this guy is special because he is carnivorous or he is speculated to be carnivorous even the scientific world is debating whether it is carnivorous or not but yeah i like to see it as a carnivorous plant because they do catch insects inside this and there is a whole lot of story to talk about this plant so stay tuned Catopsis bertoroniana is native to the neotropics. It's a region that extends between southern Florida to southern part of Brazil. Just like its cousins from the Bromeliaceae family, Catopsis also produces erect leaves that overlaps one another to produce tube-like structures that collect rainwater. So did you guys know that such structures that hold liquid medium in plants are called as phytothelmata? So in this genus of Catopsis, there are around 20 different species that have different varying st structures to their leaves, flowers, etc. But only Bartoroniana, which is Catopsis Bartoroniana, is the only plant that has been classified as a carnivorous plant or is speculated to be a carnivorous plant there are so many uh, features for this plant that makes it very special but what makes it so special for me is that i grew this little fellow from seed so what you're seeing now in my hand is three years worth of growth from a seed i sow this three years back and i patiently waited for each leaf to come to this stage and now i have almost a mature plant that is capable of catching insects as well as digesting it. So friends, the above visuals give you a brief idea on how they germinated and grew for the past two years. Sadly, I did lose one seedling to fungal attack along the way. So when you go in search of catopsis in the wild, they are found on the upper canopy of the forest where there is not many leaves and there are some dry branches sticking out from the canopy. So such places are hot spots for catopsis to grow because they love sun, they need a lot of sun and due to the reason they get much more paler and yellowish in color because of the high exposure. It's not as green as you see on my plant, in the wild they are much more yellowish. I'll attach some pictures from the web to show you guys the contrast in color. Also paired with the yellow color you also have this white coating on the plant which in fact if you touch comes off and sticks to your finger. This adaptation is actually for reflecting excess light and protecting the plant from too much sunlight. The white powdery substance that the leaf produces reflects UV radiation. This in turn attracts insects that can perceive or visually see UV light. It also makes the leaf extremely slippery. So paired with the light as well as the white coating on the plant, there appear to be small flames on the branches of the forest and this gives them their coolest common name which is lanterns of the forest. So unlike most carnivorous plants, a catopsis cannot produce any enzymes to digest its prey. So in order to tackle this problem, this species of catopsis host a variety of microorganisms as well as mosquito larvae in the water pool. So insects that the plant catches or lures into the water pool eventually drowns and dies. The remains of the insects are eaten up by these organisms that call this plant home. The excrements from such organisms are much more simpler and easier for the plant to absorb. 
So the internal surface of such leaves have sessile glands which are specialized to absorb nutrients from the water pool. So this is the intricate way by which a catopsis obtains nourishment from the insects they catch. This is a prime example of mutualism in the natural world. So guys, if you are a long-term subscriber of the channel, I really appreciate everything that you do for the channel and I surely would love to have your support in the future as well. If you are new to my channel, this is a place where we grow plants, we discuss about exotic plants and generally it's a gardening related channel. If you are that kind of a soul, I highly urge you to be a part of the channel by subscribing to the channel. Only a certain species of mosquito use this plant as a breeding pool. So you don't have to worry about your local mosquitoes breeding through this plant. So guys, this plant is actually found on wood or it's actually an epiphyte. It actually latches on to pieces of wood in the forest and collects its food as well as water just by sticking on to that surface. They do not take much from the host plant. They're just using it as a support to latch on. So in cultivation, I have grown them in sphagnum moss, but you can actually grow them in peat, uh, pieces of bark, twigs and other things that resemble the surface of a bark. Uh, it's very similar to orchids in that sense. You can grow them literally like an orchid that requires very high humidity and moisture. Now we'll briefly discuss on some factors that you have to keep in mind to keep your catopsis happy. So first and foremost, see if your catopsis requires supplemental feeding. If it is not catching a lot of insects on its own, you can always use aquarium fish food or fish pellets as an alternative. Here you can see me taking a couple of pellets in my fingertip and sprinkling all over the plant. Do this once every two weeks, that's more than enough. The next thing is to water your plant with a very pure source of water like reverse osmosis water or rainwater. Fill all the cavities in between the leaves to the brim and also don't forget to water the medium as well. So just like any members from the uh, bromeliad group, they also flower. So if you're familiar with bromeliads, uh, air plants or pineapples, they all do produce flowers. Likewise. A catopsis also flowers. They flower a lot. They flower like a long inflorescence from the center, and multiple blooms will be there on the inflorescence. Uh, but my plant is nowhere near flowering size, so I'm not expecting it anytime soon. Whenever it does flower, I'll definitely post a new video about it. So to conclude, this plant is so special because from its family of Bromeliaceae, this is one of two plants that exhibit carnivory which is a rare feature in the plant kingdom so guys that's the video for the week i hope you guys found it interesting and useful i hope you learned something new and i also hope you enjoyed watching my little plant grow from a small little seedling to this size right now uh, i will be sure to uh, update you guys whenever he gets to give me a flower of if there is any more further development from him I'll definitely make another video for this plant uh, until next time it's normal signing off